Good morning, folks. We've got weather, bit of pestilence, top satellite articles detailing the Milky Way and beyond, focus on Mars and back home to close. But we begin with incoming sunspots at spaceweathernews.com. The incoming active region was a bit calmer the last 24 hours, bright umbral magnetic fields becoming visible on the left there. You may recall Earth had entered a coronal hole stream in the solar wind, not only modest intensity, but relatively short-lived as the stream is backing off now, having produced only minor geomagnetic instability. The real space weather story is here. Will it fire facing Earth or succumb to the Earth-facing solar quiet that has taken active regions down to the bones this last entire solar cycle? We'll find out the next 10 days. India, Cyclone Fani, nearly a million evacuated as the storm slammed into the coastline yesterday. All damage reports and other accounting of losses will be days away still. Best of luck there. Meanwhile, to the west of them in Iran and surrounding nations, the locusts have arrived en masse. Full grown and swarming, never a fun sight to see this. It's time to jump out. We are going to the second Lagrange point where Gaia is surveying the Milky Way. The spin capture pattern has already revolutionized our understanding of the galaxy, and it's just getting started. Read more at the link below. And right now it's time to go bigger, to the multi-galaxy scale. This video here is from Hubble, slowly zooming in, way in, all the way to the legacy wide field view. With each zoom restricting the area to spot luminous matter, each zoom manages to reveal more and more populated deep cosmos, such that when the Hubble zoom takes it down to focus on a region of the sky no larger than our moon, there are more than 200,000 galaxies that can be isolated and spotted just in that area alone. And remember, Hubble focuses on infrared, UV, and optical light. It will miss the radio galaxies and distant X-ray emitters. Quasi-questionable article out about Mars' transition from this to this. The former oceanic world, studied under the most recent global dust storm, and the questionable aspect is that the dust storms might be playing a role in the water loss of the planet, they say as opposed to losing its magnetic field and atmospheric pressure. Now, while they have a whole video explaining that theory, the second half of the article discusses how the storms don't even reshape the landscape, which means they are less geologically relevant. The water thing they just mentioned, like they forgot about it, halfway down the page. Anyway, last but not least, the feature event this week was a strike back at Harvard scientists and the American Astronomical Society regarding a paper saying magnetic reversals were unlikely to cause extinction. Thus far, the agreement is favorable, including from those quiet professors and NASA folks who do risk talking to me. We have not received a response from Dr. Lingham, from Harvard, or anyone else involved in the original publication, or on our offer made in the end of the video. Must watch, help share, not sure the good doctor at Harvard even knows the rebuttal exists yet. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.